Hello friends, Intuitive Renee here bringing you your weekly terascopes for the week of the 2nd to the 8th of November 2020. This week I am working with the Centennial Tarot and I am also working with the Universe Has Your Back cards to bring you some awesome messages of guidance and of inspiration for the week ahead. So you know the drill, you know what to do in the description below will be links to each sign of the zodiac so you can go straight to the one that you want to want to know more about um, and obviously you can watch as many or as little as you want to depending on your circumstances and the intention behind these um, terascopes is really just to help you navigate the week help you know what kind of energies you're dealing with um, what's happening out there in the universe what do you need to be mindful of so that when it comes to making decisions when it comes to to making some changes in your life um, that yeah you can use the information in this reading to to help you make the right decisions and so also to know whether it's a week of actually going ahead and making changes or going ahead and starting something or whether you should be holding back so as you can see we're going to be working with three cards um we'll start off with the the oracle and then we'll go into the tarot for each sign of the zodiac so you can at this point jump straight ahead to whatever sign of the zodiac you're interested in and i shall see you there and welcome Aries, welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. Let's get straight into it and see what your week has in store for you. So starting with the Universe Has Your Back cards, let's see the message we have there. And it says, energy flows where my intention goes. So Aries, that's telling you that this week it's a week to be paying attention. It's a week to be focusing on your intentions and making sure that you are thinking along the right lines and make sure that what you're actually wanting, what you're thinking about is actually what you want to attract. So remember, if you're stressing, if you're worried, if your anxiety levels are high, then that is exactly where you're throwing your energy, where you're, you are directing your energy. So try and keep a positive outlook Try and keep a positive mind and let it all work out for you. Let's see what your tarot has in store. So this is the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot and it is just so beautiful. I just love, love, love the artwork. All right. So Aries, you've got the world. So it's telling you, if you set the correct intentions, if you focus on intention, if you focus on setting, um, if you focus on setting the intentions that are necessary and that are needed in your life right now, then just recognize that the world is your oyster, that you can actually achieve anything. What I love about the world card is it talks about completion, it talks about success, it talks about happiness and joy and all of those things. It talks about being the trophy and receiving the trophy and knowing that you know you have achieved everything. But it doesn't mean that that's the end. The world card is, is such an awesome one because it says that once we've completed and gone a full revolution, we have to start again. And that's why we have these infinity symbols on either end of our wreath. So it is saying to you that success is yours, happiness is yours, joy is yours, all of those things. But it's also saying Saying that you have completed you have come full circle and it doesn't mean that we stop now and we go and we have a holiday it means that we start the next adventure the next activity the next thing okay and remember it's all about setting intentions it's all about setting and and having that correct outlook that you are looking for and needing in your life let's see our second tarot card okay so here we have the king of cups King of Cups, you know, so Cups deals with our emotions. Cups deals with our emotions, with our thoughts, with our, you know, our feelings towards ourselves and our feelings towards other people. So whatever it is that you've been working so hard at, whatever it is that's been occupying so much of your time and so much of your thoughts recently, just recognize that uh, you, you're you doing incredibly well and people are starting to take you seriously. People are starting to respect and value you. People are starting to... Um, to, to see everything that you are doing and everything that you are accomplishing. You are definitely seen as somebody who is lovable, who is approachable, who has a lot of guidance and assistance, and who has the patience to help other people. But again, I think this is the big lesson for you, Aries, is recognizing that energy flows where your intention goes. So look at what you're setting the intention of this week. Are you wanting to just be still? 
because that's what he's at. The world says to you, we've done, we've, we've achieved, we've accomplished, we've just gone full circle. So we may be feeling a bit exhausted. We may be feeling a bit low. We may be feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can actually do this any longer. So we may be needing a bit of a rest, okay? But the kick of cups, he's saying, okay, well, let's recognize our emotions. Let's recognize our feelings. Let's pay attention to what's actually going on within us and use that to our advantage. But the king is also about strategy. The king is also about control and dominance. So it's about let's let's recognize our, our intentions, let's recognize our thoughts, let's recognize our feelings, and let's utilize them now that we've come full circle, now that we have reached the end of a road, um, before we just carry on or before we give up, let's let's put some thought into it. Let's put some thought and some strategy into it to make sure that we are making the right decisions and the right actions and the right plans at the right times. Because I'm going to repeat it again, Aries, energy flows where my intention goes. How absolutely awesome. All right, so Aries, you go and have an awesome week with love and blessings from my heart to yours until we connect again. You take care. Hello Taurus and welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me Intuitive Renee. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back cards and with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith deck which are giving such awesome readings this week. So let's have a look. We're going to start off with our Oracle to see the theme for our week ahead. And Taurus, yours is telling you, I honor how I want to feel. And I think that's uh, that's really lovely. I quite like that for you because Taurus, it's telling you that this week, this week of the 2nd to the 8th of November, you have to be very mindful of your feelings, very mindful of what's going on in your life, very mindful of how you are responding to that and how that is making you feel. But it also says, I honor how I want to feel. So spend a bit of time this week, especially early in the week, spend a bit of time just asking yourself, what, what am I going through right now? What is happening in my world right now? And is that how I want to be feeling? And if it isn't, well, I think this card is saying to you that it's time that you stop paying attention to how you want to feel. What is it? Do you want to feel happiness? I mean, nobody wants to feel sadness. Nobody wants to feel any kind of negative emotion. But you need to honor how you want to feel. You need to be honest with yourself about how it is that you want to feel, what is it that you want to experience, and then work towards that. Okay, let's see what the tarot has to say and how the tarot is going to expand on that message. All right, Ten of Cups, love Ten of Cups. So Ten of Cups talks about happy family. Ten of Cups talks about having everything that your heart and soul needs, wants, and desires. So here we have a couple, we have children, we've got a home, there's river, there's abundance, there's rainbows. You know, it really is, and you can see how they are just so happy and just so in the moment. And that's exactly the Ten of Cups. So Ten of Cups says, let's acknowledge Let's acknowledge everything that we have. Let's acknowledge everything that is going well in our lives. You know, just because we're happy in this moment doesn't mean we don't have our stresses. Doesn't mean we don't have our challenges because we certainly do. You know, that's just normal. That's just life. There's always stresses and worries. But let's honor how you want to feel in the moment. Let's be in the moment. Let's not worry about tomorrow. Let's not worry about yesterday. Let's be in the now because that's the only one that matters. Carrying on with that, I love it, the strength card. Okay, so Taurus, the strength card tells you that you have the strength within you to achieve anything that you want to. But again, it's about let's honor how you want to feel. You know, there, there's a lot of pressure from society to achieve and to be and to to live your life a particular way and to, you know, all of the, there's a lot of society pressures on us. And I think this is saying to you that you don't have to conform to that. You don't have to fit into that. If it doesn't really resonate with you, if it doesn't really please you, if it doesn't really make you happy, don't feel obligated to stick with that. Don't feel obligated to be the way that the universe or that society is saying. Honor how you want to feel. Be honest with yourself. Be open and honest with yourself. You deserve happiness. And you have the strength within you to achieve that. So Taurus, don't feel pressure by society. Recognize that you are in, that you have everything that you need to be happy. You have everything that you need to celebrate life. This is going to be a good week for you, Taurus. If I look at this, it's going to be a good week as long as you are honest with yourself, as long as you are honest, truthful, and open with yourself about how you want to feel. 
recognize that you have a lot to be grateful for in your life, that you have a lot going on that you can be grateful for, that you can celebrate, that you can be happy with, and you are stronger than you realize. And if you think back over the last couple of weeks, you've had to dig deep. You've had to dig deep within your, your heart and soul to find aspects of yourself that you didn't really know were there before. Um, so celebrate that, acknowledge that, and realize that you've actually done incredibly well. So Taurus, have a good week with love and blessings from our heart to yours until we connect again. Take care. And hello and welcome Gemini, welcome to your weekly terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. I do hope that you are well. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back cards and I am working with the Centennial right away at Smith Tarot deck and we're getting some really interesting and amazing readings. So we're going to start off with the Oracle deck to get the theme for the week ahead for all you Geminis out there. And here we have the card says... I find a deeper meaning and personal growth amid the discomfort. So, Gemini, we have to acknowledge and we have to admit that the last couple of weeks, had the last while, has certainly not been easy. It has certainly been difficult. One of the things that I immediately see with this card is the phases of the moon. So we've got crescent, half, and full moon. And, you know, that immediately reminds us that it is just cycles of life, okay? That we, we have these cycles of life that we just seem to be going through. And we need to understand that as much as it has been difficult and as much as there has been a lot of discomfort, should bring the card up and see if you can see it a bit clearer. Um, and as much as there has been all this discomfort and all this uncertainty in your life, that we need to find the deeper meaning, don't we? Okay? We need to find the deeper meaning. We need to understand the personal growth that we're going through. And yet, personal growth isn't always fun. It isn't always easy. And it, it is quite often really, really difficult and really, really uncomfortable. But we need to understand that it is just the process that we need to go through. So this week, we're going to spend a bit of time turning within. We're going to spend a bit of time looking within our hearts and souls to see if we can find the deeper meaning and the personal growth through or amid all the discomfort that you're going through. Let's see what the tarot wants to say to you today. Okay, so Gemini, for your week ahead, understand that there's going to be a lot of thinking back. There's going to be a lot of comparison to life today versus life a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago. We're certainly going to be spending a bit of time comparing and looking back. This is a card of reminisce. This is a card of, you know, nostalgia and, and thinking back to a happier time, possibly even an easier time, because this discomfort and pain that we've been going through is quite difficult. So this week, we need to be, we, we will be looking, we will be doing some comparison and trying to sort of get back on track, trying to sort of get back into a place of happiness, of joy and of comfort, okay? Um, so, so this week we are going to be, and it's also about, you know, recognizing the gifts. I'm going to call it this, this personal growth that we're going through. What is the gift that the universe is giving you through this personal growth? What is the growth that is taking place for you? I'm, I'm very curious to see what else we've got. Okay. So we've got the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles is the card of telling you, you know what, it doesn't matter how discomfort, how discomf how uncomfortable let me get my right words <laughs> it doesn't matter how uncomfortable it is it doesn't matter how difficult it is you've got to just keep prodding on you've just got to keep doing the work you've got to keep going all right and i mean here this particular this particular person is is making his his discs he's making his coins he's making his plaques he's not worried about what's happening in at town he's not worried about what's happening all the way he's dedicated and he's focused yes he through this work, when he goes into like a meditative state, is when he starts thinking back to a happier time or a previous time in his life. And he maybe starts wondering, oh, I wonder what happened there. I wonder if I should this up. I would love to. And he starts thinking about all the things, comparing his life from now to when it was in the past. But when we do this, what we need to see, the differences between these two, is the personal growth. And I think, Gemini, this week is going to be a week of personal growth. I, I think for you this week, it's going to be about having this realization that the discomfort hasn't just been to cause pain. It hasn't just been to, to you know, create misery in your life. But there is so much growth that's taking place. So let's spend this week looking back at our lives. Let's look back at this time last year. Let's go a whole 12 months back. Let's go six months back. Let's look back at any time in the past and let's do a comparison and let's look at all the work that you've put into it, okay? Because you have. You've worked incredibly hard. All you've done is just, it doesn't matter what the universe has thrown at you, you've managed to just 
keep going and you've put the effort in all the time and that is what is hugely significant so Gemini your week ahead is going to be a week of nostalgia it's going to be a week of reminiscing it's going to be a week of looking back to see how far you've grown to see all the work that you've put into it and the growth that you have accomplished have a good week from my heart to yours until we connect again you take care Hello and welcome to all Cancerians out there. Welcome to your weekly taroscopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week we are working with an oracle deck which is called The Universe Has Your Back and we are working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot, giving us some really awesome detailed messages for your week ahead. So let's get straight into it and see what the message of the cards is for you. Right, so the first one says, I am the dreamer of my dream. I think that is such an awesome an awesome quote, an awesome ad affirmation, an awesome thing to work with, statement to work with. I am the dreamer of my dream. And you know, that is exactly, it's telling you that you are responsible, that you are a part of, that you are a big part of the dream. You know, dreams are something that we aspire to. Dreams are something that we wish for. Dreams are something that we yearn for and want in our lives. But if you're not active in that dream, if you're not actively working towards it, how are you ever going to achieve it? And I think that this is exactly what the message of this particular card is telling you that you are the dreamer of your dream. In other words, you are the one who is creating your own reality. Okay, because a dream is a future reality, a potential reality, and you are the dreamer of your dream, which means that you are creating your own reality. And this week, I'm going to see what these other two cards have to say for you. But Cancerians, I really do think that this is telling you that for the week ahead, recognize that you are in the driver's seat and you are able to create the dream anything, any dream that you want, any dream that you have for yourself, you can create it for yourself this week. Let's have a look and see what your tarot has to say. Ah, King of Pentacles. Right, so kings are about control, about structure, about dominance, about, you know, being in charge, um, being a leader, being all of those kind of things. And Pentacles has got to do with our finances and our material possessions. So you with the dreamer of your dreams is telling you that if you want financial abundance, if you want to surround yourself with the most beautiful of furniture and goodies and things, you can absolutely do that. You are in control of your own abundance because that's what this message is saying. You are in control of your own abundance. You are in control of your own life. So if things are not looking so great at the moment, what are your dreams? How I'm going to say, how low are your dreams? Are you not really ambitious? Are you thinking that it's never going to happen for you? You don't have that kind of luck. Um, you know, do you, are you self-sabotaging yourself? Recognize that if you can dream it, you can create it. Because that's what the King of Pentacles is telling you. King of Pentacles talks about financial abundance, material wealth. Talks about having lavish luxury around you. Now, luxury is, is a, a word that means something different to everybody. My version of luxury and your version of luxury may be very different. So don't compare your world to somebody else's unless that's your dream. And if that's your dream, then be completely honest and open with yourself and say, right, how did those people get that? What kind of career choices, what kind of lifestyle, what kind of whatever do they have? And adjust your dreams to be more appropriate with your life and know that whatever your luxury is, is what you can have. Ah, definitely got to do with the home this week, okay? So here we have the Four of Wands and the Four of Wands talks about coming together and celebration and happiness and Marriage and commitment, okay? These are the words, the key words that come out of this particular card. So you are the dreamer of your dream. So with everything that's going on in your life, with relationship, with finances, with career, because that's what's covered here. All of that is covered here. Recognize that anything, this is a good week to set your dreams in motion. This is a good week to work towards your dreams. It's a good week for reality to become more in line with the dreams and the wishes that you have for yourself. But I am going to say to you, Cancerians, please pay attention to the thoughts. Please, please pay attention to what's happening in your mind. Because if you are thinking 
bad thoughts. If you're thinking, oh, it'll never happen to me, I'm not good enough, blah, blah, blah. If you're having those kind of thoughts, then that is the reality you're creating for yourself. And this week, you need to recognize this is a good week for change. This is a good week for commitment. When I talk about commitment, we don't necessarily specifically only refer to marriage. Commitment means just a promise or a connection with another individual, situation, circumstance, or something like that. So this is a good week for new beginnings. It's a good week for a new beginning that's going to take you towards your dream because you are in control. All right. Cancerians, have an awesome week with love and blessings from my heart to yours until we connect again. Take care. Hello and welcome Leo. Welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week we are working with an oracle deck which is called The Universe Has Your Back and we are working with Tarot which is the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck giving us some awesome, awesome messages for the week ahead. Let's get straight into it Leo and let's see what your oracle message is for the week. Okay, let me actually bring it closer so that we can read it because there's quite a lot of text on here. So yours, Leo, is telling you, in any moment, I can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. Let me see if I can get the camera. There we go. In any moment, I can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. That is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful message. Absolutely, Leo. And what is this actually saying to you? It's saying to you that it doesn't matter what you're facing right now. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now. It doesn't matter how terrible, awful, complicated, complex, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what you're going through. In any moment, all you need to do is stop, take a deep breath in, exhale it out, and know that through prayer, contemplation, stillness, you can use the presence of love, recognize and understand how much love there is around you, whether it is from another human being, whether it is from an animal, whether it is from God, whether it is from divine source, from the angels, from your spirit guides, whoever it is that you work with, whoever it is that you connect with, just recognize that if you surrender to the presence of love in your life, everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. But it is important that you allow this presence of love in. And the only way that you do that is by stopping, going quiet, turning within, and connecting with yourself. That is how you fully embrace, understand, and accept that presence of love. So Leo, this week, that's what it, that's what's important for you this week. This week, it's important that you connect with yourself. This week, it's important that you take the time that you need to, to be gentle with yourself. Let's get straight in and see what your tarot has to say, Leo. Okay, now we understand the message, all right? So here we have the Ten of Wands, and you can see you know, his arms are full, all right? He is carrying a load and he has been walking for quite some time already and that's where he's going. He's still got a way to go. He's not there yet, but he's feeling weak and with every step that he takes, he feels weaker. With every step that he takes, he feels more and more certain that he's not going to make it. You know, these sticks are awkward. They, they're heavy. They're, you know, his arms are tired. His back, you can see how he's arched over. He is completely exhausted. So now we understand why Spirit is saying to you, surrender to the presence, of the powerful presence of love, because you are feeling exhausted. And you know what, we're into November now. And yeah, when the closer we get to the end of the year, I think the more exhausted we all get. But Leo, obviously for you, you've been carrying this burden for such a long time, and you're starting to feel the weight of it. Let's see what else we have. Okay. So here we have the Five of Cups, and the Five of Cups is about disappointment. The Five of Cups is saying that, you know, things haven't quite worked out the way you wanted or the way you hoped or the way you needed to. So there is about disappointment. I mean, you can see the black cloak. You can see the head put down. So, Leo, for you this week, this week you are going to feel like you just don't have the energy to carry on. You are going to feel like things are just not working out the way that you wanted, hoped, needed. And through all of this... It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter how difficult it gets. In any moment, you can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. So it doesn't mean you give up. It doesn't mean you stop the journey. It doesn't mean you put the, the, the ones down and you know go home without them. You have come so close, but you can stop for a minute and breathe. 
And if you do that, if you take a minute to contemplate, to be still, and to breathe, you will see that there are other cups right here. So this person is upset and disappointed and angry and frustrated over these cups, but they're not seeing that there's two more right here. Okay, and this is when we get over our emotions, when we don't, when we stop our emotions from completely overwhelming us, that's when we see the opportunities. If he stops for a minute, contemplates and just breathes and catches his breath, he's going to see how close he is to reaching his destination, to reaching everywhere that he needs to. So Leo, for you this week, it's going to be an emotional week. It's going to be a tough one. You may feel like you just don't have the energy to carry on. You may feel like it's just, it's too much. When that happens to you, take a minute, take a deep breath, exhale it out, close your eyes and just connect with yourself prayer, contemplation, and stillness. And that's where you're going to find the power, that's where you're going to find the energy, and that's where you're going to find the resolve to carry on and to find the solutions that you need to. So Leo, with love and blessings from my heart to yours, until we connect again, take care. Hello Virgo and welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back Oracle Cards and I'm working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot Deck, giving us some awesome messages for the week ahead. So let's see what your week has in store for you, Virgo. Oh, how absolute. I love the colors. Aren't they just gorgeous? And the message inside says, Oneness is my true nature. Let me actually bring it up closer so that you can see. Oneness is my true nature. And I, I love that. So we can interpret that in so many different ways. But immediately what I'm getting with that is being one with self, being one with nature, being one with connecting with and being part of and recognizing how being one with everything and everyone around you is your true nature and is what you truly need this week. So oneness, the word itself means singular, means alone, means being independent, being strong, being capable of doing things on your own. But when you extend that oneness, because that's what I'm seeing here. So oneness is the circle, this white, and then it connects with the blue, then it connects with the red, then it connects with the yellow, and it just gets keep getting bigger. And every time we add a new layer, we are still one. And wow, I'm getting quite philosophical here, Virgo. <laughs> so Virgo, oneness is your true nature. And I think it's recognizing what does the term, what does the word oneness mean? Does it mean that you need to be isolated and alone, independent, confident, you know, happy to do things on your own? Or does it mean that when you connect with another and we work as a team, we work as one, that that makes us better, stronger and, and more in line to, to succeed? So your week ahead, I think, is going to be working with this, recognizing what times in your life, what aspects, areas, and circumstances in your life, is it important and significant to do things completely on your own? And when else is it important and significant to team up with somebody so that as a unit, as a group, we are one and therefore better able to achieve things? I like that. That's very interesting. Let's see what your tarot has to say. Okay. So the first card we have is High Priestess. This is my card. I, I love I love her. She is just so awesome. What I love about her, well, there's so many different aspects and facets to this card, and I'm not going to take you through all of them. But first of all is we have the pomegranates in the background, which is all about abundance. We have the yin and the yang. We have the black and the white, okay, which talk about opposites. We've got the crescent moon at her feet that she's sort of in control of. We've got her cloak, her clothes that become river, that become water. She has the scroll of knowledge, the scroll of tarot. She's got the triple goddess, you know, so there's so much going on with this card. But ultimately what it boils down to is trusting the self okay recognizing that you contain the answers that you're looking for oneness okay the high priestess is saying that you don't need anyone external validation you don't need anybody else to tell you who and what you are it's about trusting and believing in you recognizing that you have the talent the skills the knowledge the understanding the abilities you have everything that you need to achieve whatever it is that you want to okay but it's about trusting in you because you know what 
we all have talent, we all have skills, we all have ability, and we all know what we're good at. We all know what we're actually capable of doing. But how many of us question and doubt it? How many of us don't really think that that's true? How many of us think that, well, no, um, yes, I might be able to bake a cake, but, oh, is my cake nice? So, so those kind of thoughts is what we need to be mindful of, because the high priestess says, trust that the cake that you're able to make is the best cake that there is. And when you believe that, when you recognize that oneness is your true nature, you will be amazed at what you can and will actually accomplish. Let's see what else we've got. Okay, so we have the Seven of Swords. So Seven of Swords is a, I'm going to call it, it's my controversial card, okay, because my understanding and my interpretation of this card is not traditional. I like to change things up a bit. I'm, a, I'm a, an optimist. I like to believe in positives. I like to believe in, in, in good in everything and everyone. So I've changed the interpretation of this card a little bit. So it is normally the card of taking what doesn't belong to you. It is normally the card of theft and thievery and greed and all of those. And of course, those are all negative. So I like to change it and say, well, you know what? So this person, as much as they may have terrible intentions, their intentions were to take the swords, okay? So they've gone into town and while everybody's at the circus, while everybody's at the party, they've gone tent to tent and they've taken all the swords. Um, they never really thought this through very carefully, did they? Because they've arrived. I mean, there you can see there's a whole bunch of people at the back there who are having a party or whatever it is that they're doing. So he knew he was going to take swords. That was his intention. All right. So he had set that intention. It was a negative intention, but he had set the intention. He was going to take the swords. Um, he knew he wanted to take all of them or a lot of them, but he didn't think about how he was going to carry them. So he's now got five. He's realize somebody's coming, somebody's seen him, somebody's heard him or whatever it is. He, he's now needing to move away, but there's these two swords still here and he's thinking, oh my gosh, but now I want them, but I don't know how to carry them. Out. So he hasn't strategized and he hasn't planned very well. Okay. So to me, because of that, I always, I always take this card as a planning card, always saying to you that there's something you need to achieve. There's something you want to do. There's something you want to achieve. But if you don't put the right planning into it, if you don't give it enough thought, if you don't put the strategies in place, you're going to fail and you're going to get caught. And if you get caught, then things are not going to be so fabulous for you. All right. So oneness is my true nature. If this person Whatever it is that he had to do, whatever it is that he needed to do, good or bad, we, we're not here to judge, okay? <laughs> good or bad, had he asked a friend, had he roped at somebody else to come and assist him to help, he would have achieved so much more had he put some thought into it. The high priestess is saying that recognize that you've got the skills, recognize that you've got the talent and the abilities. You've got to learn to trust yourself. But at the same time, don't try and take on everything. Don't try and be, be and do everything on your own. If you need help, Call for help, ask for help, get somebody to come in and assist you. But recognize that oneness is my true nature. I'm also going to say it's about being in control. It's about recognizing that this is your plan, that this is your strategy, this is your action. You have the plan. You need to come up with it because you are ultimately responsible. But oneness is your true nature. It's about recognizing what you want and recognizing what you have to do to achieve it. So Virgo, that is for your week ahead. Work with that and see how it assists you. Make sure that you trust and believe in yourself. Make sure that you plan accordingly and connect with. And if you are working in a team, make sure that you are really working in a team. Connect with and commit to. And if you're doing something on your own, then really do it on your own. With love and blessings from my heart to yours. Until we meet again. Take care. Hello and welcome Libra. Welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back Oracle and I am working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot. Let's get straight into it and see what your week has in store for you. So from the Universe Has Your Back card, uh, sorry, I want to just bring it up that you can read it. It says, when I lean towards love, I am led. How beautiful is that? When I lean towards love, I am led. So I think, you know, I, I really do like that. So Libra, for you, for the week ahead, the theme is going to be love. The theme is going to be recognizing the love that you have, the love that you have to hold on to, the love that you are receiving, the love that you are giving. The theme is definitely going to be around love. And when you lean towards love, recognize that you are led and recognize that you will be led 
to all the good things, good places, good people and good opportunities that you need, want and deserve in your life right now. I think that's absolutely awesome. And you know what? Love is, love is the energy of, of life, isn't it? Love is the energy of our universe. Everything needs to be around love. Love needs to be the core. Love needs to be the center of our universe. And when you when you just go with the love, when you just accept and welcome it with open arms and open heart into your life, you'd be amazed at the success and the opportunities that actually come through for you. So Libra, your theme for the week, when you lean towards love, you will be led to wherever you need to be and it's going to be awesome. Let's see what your tarot has to say. Okay, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is 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 beautiful card, okay? Wheel of Fortune, first of all, it's card number 10, which also brings down to card one, or, or sorry, numerology, we re reduce it down to a one, which is about being independent, which is about being strong, which is about recognizing and believing and trusting with yourself. But it's also about recognizing that there is this flow to life, okay? This is also known as the karmic wheel. And it, it's about whatever you do, if somebody's pushing on this side, so if you're pushing up over here, the wheel is going to go down over there and vice versa. And at every point in the wheel, there's something different. I mean, we also have each of these animals, each of these archetypes that are reading books, that are learning, gaining knowledge, gaining insight and gaining inspiration. This Wheel of Fortune is telling you that if you've done good, you will receive good. If you've done bad, you will receive bad. And that's exactly, again, it's feeding into or it's talking to and it's connecting with this card. Because when you lean towards love, you are led towards love. You are led towards positive, happy, successful, good outcomes and good opportunities and success. The Wheel of Fortune is telling you that as well, but it's also trusting that this wheel is just going to keep turning. There is nothing that we can do to stop this wheel from turning. With the Wheel of Fortune card, I often say that it's a card where no human intervention is required, and that's the Karma Wheel. The Karma Wheel, it turns, okay? We cannot stop it. There is nothing that we can do to stop it. It's not like we can just say, pause, can I just get off for a minute? That wheel, it just keeps on going, it keeps on going. And with every revolution, with every time that the wheel spins, we gain knowledge, we gain understanding, we gain strength, we gain compassion, we gain understanding, and it all takes us back to love. Oh, that is so awesome. Let's have a look and see what this one is. Okay, it's the card of love. <laughs> Ace of Cups is the card of love. Look how our cup runneth over. Okay, look at the cup runneth over. It is water is emotion. Ace is new beginnings. So new relationships, new, new heart connections is what I'm going to call it. So Libra, your week ahead is going to be very much with re very much connected to love, very much around love orange orange going into the yellow so it's lightning as we go the ace of cups talks about a new love interest and when i say love interest i'm not talking relationship it very well could be but the ace of cups is just about a new love connection a new understanding or a new renewal of relationship of emotion of connection with another person so when i say love interest you know if you are married if you are in a relationship if you whether it's a long one or it's a brand new one this week we're going to recognize how our relationship has evolved and how we are in a new place so it's about recognizing the connection that you have with another person it's about recognizing the love that you share and that you have with another person and when you work towards that love in this relationship you will be led to even more when you open yourself up to have so much more in your relationship you will receive more and the relationship will evolve and grow and it is a constant wheel that is turning the wheel is constantly turning we never get to a point of perfection we never get to a point of happiness and enough there's always room for more growth and that's what the wheel of fortune is telling you what you put in is what you get out. What you put in is what you get out. Your cup runneth over the opportunities that are there for you are huge. Use them, take advantage of them, and allow them into your space. Libra, you are going to have an awesome week looking at this with love and blessings from my heart to yours. Until we connect again, you take care. Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. I hope you are well. This week we are working with the Universe Has Your Back Oracle Cards. And this is the Centennial Rider-Waite-Smith Tarot. 
and I promise you we're getting some really awesome readings from this this week. Let's get straight into it and see what message we get from the oracle for you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so this is the deck. The deck is the universe has my back, and that is the card that we've drawn for you today. So this week, Scorpio, please understand that you're obviously going to be facing some challenges. You're obviously going to be having some some things where you're going to be questioning, like who's supporting me, who's helping me, who's got my back. And it's important that you know that the universe has your back. Whether you are a spiritual person, whether you have a belief in a higher power, whatever your belief system is, just recognize that this week you're going to notice, you're going to see, you're going to feel the support that you have. You know, let's be honest, the last couple of weeks have been quite interesting, quite challenging. You've probably faced all sorts of things that you normally wouldn't. Um, and maybe you're feeling like a little bit as if um, you don't have the support that you need, the support that you want, the support that you desire. But this week, the, re the message for you that you are going to really get to see, get to feel and get to understand, you, it's going to be no question or no doubt in your mind this week, Scorpio, that the universe has your back and you're going to see it, you're going to feel it and you're going to know it. Let's see why you need to know that the universe has your back this week. Let's get straight into your tarot and see what we have. Oh, of course, you see, I could have guessed that. So the death card. First of all, let's just clarify nobody's dying, okay? The death card it does not actually mean literal death. What the death card means is change. It means giving up a portion of ourselves, recognizing the evolution of life, recognizing that sometimes we have to, if we are a tree, sometimes we have to drop leaves, sometimes we have to completely lose all our leaves in order to grow, in order to advance, in order to progress. And that's the death card. I wish I could change it to read transition, change, progress, um, growth, because that's really what it means. It doesn't actually mean death. But in order for growth to happen, in order for change to happen, we have to let go of something. And that letting go is the portion which is known as death. You know, life is is all about that. If you If you take a simple scenario of changing jobs, all right. It's something that we all go through in life at least once, maybe many times. But when we do that, our, our relationship to the first company, our relationship to our first employment has to die in order for us to move on, in order for us to start the new position. So our relationship with the company, our relationship with that first organization, whatever it is, that has to come to a complete close in order for us to start and be able to take on the new opportunities that are coming your way. And you know what? Let's be honest. If you can remember the first time you've had to resign from a job or the first time you got retrenched or the first time anything happened when you lost your income or you lost your, your career, it was scary. And that's when we need to know that the universe has our back. That's when we need to know that we are loved, that we are supported. And most importantly, that's when we need to know it's going to be okay. And I want to show you in this card. So there's quite a lot happening. All right. Some, and I'm not going to take you through all the nitty gritties of the card, but I do want you to see that. There comes the sun. We've gone through the night time. And in the night time, there was a lot of change and there was a lot of stuff that happened. Now, in the morning when suddenly we can see clearer the sun's coming up we can see clearly and then suddenly we're not panicking anymore suddenly we know everything's going to be okay because you know what it doesn't matter how dark the days get it doesn't matter how dreary the circumstances get the sun will always come up the sun will always come up tomorrow because the universe has your back and tomorrow when the sun comes up everything will look better let's see what else we have because this is quite interesting all right so Scorpio, clearly you're going through a thing, all right? Clearly this week is going to be a bit of a challenge for you. So there's going to be a lot of change and we have to, we have to go through this change. We actually don't have the choice. This is something that we have to actually embrace. We have to go through it. We need to know that we are loved and supported always, but we also need to recognize that a lot of what we're going through is self-inflicted because that's exactly what's going on here. So she is blindfold, blindfolded. She's got some kind of string rope clothing cloth, you know, sort of tied around her. Um, you can see it's not restricting. It's not really tight. And then there's all these swords that have been placed around her. So she feels like she's trapped. She feels like she's been held captive. She feels like she's being tortured. But if she just 
puts a little bit of effort in and wiggles her arms so she can remove this fabric, remove this cloth, remove the blindfold and see that these swords are actually not containing her or caging her or trapping her but actually keeping her safe. All right. She could actually use the swords to to remove the blindfold and to help her to get out of her current circumstance. She thinks she's standing in in water, but there's just a little bit. Okay, it's just a little bit. It's actually not as bad as her perceived opinions. And I think this is exactly what's happening for you this week, Scorpio. Because you need to recognise that change is necessary. It may not be comfortable, it may not be easy, but it absolutely is necessary. But it's also saying to you, you need to make sure that you are seeing your current circumstances in the way that they actually are. Maybe you're perceiving them a little bit uh, worse off than the reality, or worse off than what they really are. So take an honest look at your life this week. Take an honest look at yourself, who you are, what you are, how you are, all of those kind of things. And also just double check everything and make sure that uh, you see how loved and supported you are and that you see how the universe has your back. Scorpio, have a good week. With love and blessings from my heart to yours until we connect again. You take care. Hello Sagittarius and welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back cards and I'm also working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck to give us some really awesome messages. So let's get straight into it and see what your week has in store for you. All right, let me bring this closer because it's quite light. So, Sagittarius, the card says, I choose love no matter what. How fabulous is that? I choose love no matter what. And clearly, that's what you need to be doing this week. So, regardless and no matter what, whatever it is that you're facing this week, just choose love. Let love be the theme. Let love be the energy of everything that you're going through and everything that you do and whatever comes up for you this week. No matter what, I choose love. So use that as your affirmation for the week ahead and just keep reminding yourself that any time, every day, as soon as you wake up, just before you go to bed, any time you do anything, remind yourself, say, I choose love, no matter what. Because love is the energy of our universe. Love is the, the fuel of our planet, of our, of our society, of everybody. And we need more of it. So Sagittarius, for you this week, I choose love, no matter what. I love that. Let's see what your tarot has. Okay. All right. So now suddenly we start understanding why it's important to choose love because there's so much judgment. <laughs> so this judgment card, basically this is human nature. This is us over here. This is society. This is people. We're all being called out on our nonsense. We're all being called out to, to be, we're all being held accountable for who we are and what we've done. Okay. And you know what? Judgment, let's be honest. When we, when we go through this process of judgment, whether it is judgment by angels or spirit beings or divine source or whoever it doesn't matter who's judging it's never really positive judgment isn't it we generally we're in the habit human nature we're in the habit of judging in a negative uh, context not necessarily in love so we've got to learn how to change this look how these people they're all completely naked which means that they are not hiding anything they are being completely open completely vulnerable and each one have got the arms up each one have got the arms out saying you know look at me judge me I'm, I've got nothing to hide and I can assure you and I can assure you this could never happen in our world this could never happen and for you Sagittarius this week you've got to recognize transparency openness is absolutely love is the energy that needs to be dealt with and handled whatever the judgment is that you face this week whatever it is that's going to be calling you or judging you this week just send love don't worry about it try not be too anxious about it try not overthink it try not over worry about it just send love to the judgment send love to the circumstance send love to the situation and choose love no matter what and everything will work out perfectly let's get some confirmation on that ha huh. Okay, so here we have our fiery knight of wands. You can see he's got fire everywhere and he's moving. Okay, there's action, there's speed, there's all sorts of things. But there's also a little bit of magic with our pyramids in the background. Okay, but he is all about charging. He's all about action. He's all about speed. He's all about all of those kind of things. So this judgment that's going to happen 
and you choosing love no matter what. Just don't overthink it, okay? When this situation happens for you this week, when this circumstance happens, just don't overthink it. Don't try and come up with a detailed, complex plan or strategy. Just dive straight into it and choose love no matter what because that's the only way to deal with the situation when this judgment comes up when whether you're the one doing the judging or whether you are being judged okay because we don't know which side you're going to come in at it doesn't matter when this op when the situation comes through don't overthink it get straight into it but just keep reminding yourself to choose love no matter what Sagittarius have an awesome week with love and blessings from my heart to yours until we connect again. You take care. Hello and welcome Capricorn. Welcome to your weekly taroscopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back Oracle cards and I'm working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith tarot deck to get us some awesome messages. Let's get straight into it, Capricorn, and see what energies you have for the week ahead. So, all right, there's quite a lot of text on here. Let me see if I can hold it that you can see. It says, when I accept the love of the universe as my primary teacher, I will always be guided back to the light. How absolutely awesome is that? Let's read it again. When I accept the love of the universe as my primary teacher, I will always be guided back to the light. Absolutely gorgeous. I love, love, love that message. So Capricorn, what it's basically saying to you is that um, you've got to recognize that the universe has your back because that's what this deck is called. Um, the universe loves you. The universe is taking care of you. And if you work with the universe, if you work with the energies of the universe and what's going on around you, so be mindful. Because you know what? One thing that um, I see with a lot of my clients is that we, we're not aware of the signs and the synchronicities that are taking place in our life, the coincidences and the synchronicities. And when we recognize them and we start working with working with them, it's amazing how you're always guided back to the light. You're always guided to wherever you need to be. So you need to be paying attention to the signs. Pay attention to whatever's happening around you, the, the kind of opportunities being presented to you this week. And just trust and believe and know that the universe has got your back. So when you accept the love of the universe as your primary teacher, so when you accept that the universe works in a divine order, and if you work with that, instead of trying to control everything and trying to manage everything, when you just go with the flow, you will be guided to the light. You will be guided to happiness, to success, to joy, and abundance, and all of those good things that you need. Let's see what your tarot has to say. Okay. Queen of Swords. I love Queen of Swords energy. She takes no nonsense, okay? She's the kind of woman who, you know, she's got her sword and she's certainly not afraid to use it. She's all about, you know, she does care and she does have everybody's best, best interests at heart, but she's not, she doesn't have a lot of empathy, okay? She's not really empathetic to people's problems. You know, she's very quick with the solution. She's very quick with the how to do things and, and the way that things should be done. And she wants stuff done, okay? She's She's going to get things going. She's very assertive. She's very creative. She's very brave. Her mind and her wit is incredibly sharp. And she is the one who's going to get things done. So if you've got things doing this week, if you've got things on your plate, if you've got a lot of things that you need to do and achieve, be aware of what you're thinking. Be aware of the words that come out of your mouth. And make sure that the words that come out of your mouth are in line with what you're wanting to achieve this week. All right, so Capricorn, here is your teacher again, okay? So clearly there's some, I'm going to call them universal lessons taking place in your life at the moment. Because when you accept the love of the universe as your primary teacher, you will be guided to the light. And here, maybe, maybe your mind and your mouth, maybe your mind and your words and your actions are being a little bit too harsh or being a little bit too judgmental, being a little bit too quick to criticize or to speak or to express and maybe we need to be a little bit more gentle and learn the lessons so here we have two scholars who are learning from the hierophant who are 
taking in everything that he has to offer. They are so engrossed in whatever he's saying and whatever he's doing. And they just want to absorb and absorb because that is the universe. Okay. See that person as the universe, as your primary teacher. And if you absorb and learn everything that's going on around you, instead of always trying to control, instead of always trying to be the decision maker and be the one who decides who, what, when and how. Okay. Just be more, I'm going to call it observant, be more of a participant as opposed to a leader this week, Capricorn. And if you do that, I think the lessons that you learn are going to just truly astound you. So Capricorn, with love and blessings from my heart to yours. Until we meet again, you take care. Hello Aquarius and welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week I am working with the Universe Has Your Back Oracle Cards and I'm also working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot Deck. Let's get straight into it and see what your week has in store for you Aquarius. Oh I love it. Let's see. It says I am a spirit having a human experience and I am here to get closer to love. Isn't that gorgeous? I am a spirit having a human experience and I'm here to get closer to love. I think that is absolutely awesome. So Aquarius, this is something that you have to keep reminding yourself this week. This is something that you need to be very aware of and very mindful of, that you are a spirit having a human experience. And the whole reason for your earth existence, the whole reason for whatever you're going through in life at the moment is to bring you closer to love, is to get you to understand unconditional love, love of self, love of others, love of circumstance, love of situation, just love. But recognize that you are a human first. First and foremost, you are human having, sorry, you are spirit having a human experience. And having that human experience is the most important thing. And the lesson, the objective, and everything that you're doing is leading you and bringing you closer to love. So let's have a look and see on a human point, what does this mean? Okay, so we have partnerships. Two of Cups is the card of partnerships. It's the card of two people coming together. You can see that they are different. You can see that they were individuals. Now they're coming together. They are sharing something of equal value. They are sharing love. They are sharing understanding and they, they are sharing connection. Okay, and they recognize that they are souls, but they recognize that they're also humans and they are coming together. They are coming together as equals. They're coming together as equal. Not one is more important or more significant than the other. They are partnering and connecting on such an important level. What this card means for you, Aquarius, is it's basically saying to you that you've got to recognize that love, there is love of self, there is love of un, of of self, but also recognizing the significance of love and acceptance of another. And that is all part of human. You know, be, being being a human being now, it's it's not only about how much money you're making, it's not only about you know how much wealth you accumulate during your life, but it's it's about the connections that you make with other people and that connection it doesn't always have to be romantic because that's not necessarily what we're referring to but it's about just recognizing how important and significant others are we cannot be completely on our own we can't be hermits we have to the whole point of our existence is connecting and sharing with another and that's what we need to do and that's your week this week let's have a look and see what else the tarot wants you to know Oh, there we go. You see, so Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords is really one of those cards we don't want to see in a tarot reading because the Ten of Swords is saying to you that you're just lying there. You have been completely, you know, stabbed and impaled by all these swords and you're giving up. Okay, you're just going to lie there and die. You're just going to lie there and say, that's it. It's over and done with. But I think if I read these three together, it's basically saying to you that you are a spirit having a human experience, and you are here to get closer to love. If you try and do everything on your own, if you try and be independent, if you try and be somebody who doesn't need others, okay, if you're not focusing on love, if you're focusing on self, this is where you're going to be at. So you may be feeling like this already. You may be feeling as if this, you know, life is just too much. It's just too hard. It's just too difficult. It's just too much. If that's how you're feeling at the moment, it's because you're trying to be independent. You're trying to be too 
isolated or, or too controlled or too too independent and that's where you're going wrong what you need to be doing is connecting with others getting somebody to assist you getting sharing the load sharing the burden sharing the the success the joy and the happiness sharing let's put a full stop after the word sharing when you try and do everything on your own that's when things go wrong for you it's interesting with this card as well is that this yellow bit that we have here so here's the dark cloud of doom and gloom that's hanging over you but there is there is hope okay there is hope there is there is light coming through there is a bit of sun coming through over there so even though this is maybe how you're feeling you need to recognize that you are a spirit having a human experience and you're here to get closer to love if this is the way that you're feeling if this is how you're doing it's because love is not top on your priority list so Aquarius please this week we want to avoid this. We don't want to experience this. We want more of this. So connect with, work with, share with the people around you. Draw people in, let people into your world, connect with others, and know that love is the answer. So Aquarius, with love and blessings from my heart to yours, until we connect again, you take care. Hello and welcome Pisces. Welcome to your weekly Terrascopes with me, Intuitive Renee. This week we are working with the Universe Has Your Back cards and I'm also working with the Centennial Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck, giving us some awesome messages. Let's see what your theme, what your energy and what your week is going to be like for you Pisces. Oh I like it. Happiness is your birthright. How absolutely awesome is that? So Pisces, your theme for the week is recognizing this. Is a right, Really, I want you to embrace this. I really want you to take this on and to recognize that happiness is absolutely your birthright. You deserve to be happy. And in your life at the moment, in your life this week, with whatever it is that you're dealing with, you know, you need to you need to be finding that happiness and if you don't have it recognize that it is your birthright and don't stop until you have that happiness don't stop until you have the joy and the happiness that you deserve because it is your birthright okay so this is something that you can actually work with the whole week this is something that you can be repeating to yourself over and over and over again this week by saying to yourself happiness is my birthright it's not something that you want it is it should be something that you want but it is also your birthright which means whether you want it or not you're going to have it because that's what a birthright is your birthright is something that you are given unconditionally regardless of circumstances regardless of anything so happiness is your birthright take it accept it love it let's see what your tarot has to say so pisces oh there we go we have the world so the world you know what is the world the world is our everything you know we we live on the world we rely on the world the world is our absolute absolute everything but here she's she's about celebrating success she's about celebrating all that she's achieved all that she's accomplished in tarot the world card also says that you know it's about completion it's about attainment it's about coming full circle but then it also says well once we've achieved that once we've completed our journey once we've done everything we need to once we've successfully completed the cycle we start again so once we've been around once we just start going in again and again so it's about cycles in life and recognizing that once you've found happiness so for example if you've always wanted a particular item and then one day you're able to actually purchase or get or attain the item and you are happy in that moment that doesn't mean it's the end of your cycle it doesn't mean it's the end of your world it doesn't mean it's the end of your life it doesn't mean that you have achieved everything and you stop what it means is that we then start again we then find something else that we want that's going to bring us happiness something else that we need that's going to bring us happiness and we go through that process again there is never a point in your life where you can say right that's it I have happiness and this is as good as it's going to get and I stop here no because that's what the world card is saying to you it's about recognizing that you will achieve accomplish and attain and complete everything that you need to and want to finding your happiness and getting your happiness but as soon as you found it as soon as you've achieved that it's about moving on to the next thing and with each one we become more elevated more evolved and closer to ultimate happiness let's see the second card that we have oh i like that so here we have is the six of pentacles and the six of pentacles is the card of helping others 
okay so how do we find this happiness for you pisces for this week your happiness is going to be found in helping other people this is part of your journey this is something that you need to do this is something you need to achieve if you have and it doesn't mean i mean this particular person is helping out with coins okay but that's because he has an abundance of coins if you do not have an abundance of coins please don't think that that is the only way to help another person sometimes just offering your time offering your ear just listening to a person just being attentive to a person sometimes is all the help that they need so don't feel like the only way to help a person is through finance or, or through offering money okay sometimes just a smile offering somebody who doesn't have offering a smile offering a little bit of happiness giving them something to eat something to drink you know that is all that they're asking for but for you this week pisces recognize that your week is going about is going to be about finding your happiness about recognizing that happiness is a continuous thing it's not something that you know i, I hear a lot of people and they say that I will be happy when I have, or when I achieve, or when I accomplish. There's no when. Happiness is your birthright. It is something that we have to work on continuously, over and over and over again. But for you this week, Pisces, recognize that your happiness, you are going to get, have, and experience a lot of happiness by helping others less fortunate than yourself this week. Have an awesome week, Pisces, with love and blessings from my heart to yours. Until we connect again. You take care.